Financial elder abuse is the illegal, unauthorised or improper use of an older person's money or assets within a relationship where there is an expectation of trust. Financial elder abuse is usually committed by someone close to the victim, like a family member or carer. Types of elder abuse vary from borrowing pension money to assets being transferred from them, or their will being changed fraudulently or through undue influence. Research commissioned by state trustees found up to 5% of Victorians aged over 65 have reported some form of financial elder abuse and we assume more cases go unreported. State trustees is often asked to step in after the damage is done, when it's often too late to recover lost property or money, which is why we're committed to helping early detection of elder abuse. Older people living with dementia are considered to be at greater risk because their impaired cognition can leave them more vulnerable. Loss of memory or brain function can cause patients to lose confidence in their understanding of finances or legal rights. Abusers of people living with dementia are also more likely to feel that their actions won't have consequences, as they may believe the victim won't be able to remember or communicate the abuse to others. Healthcare professionals can make a huge impact on recognition and early detection of financial elder abuse in people with dementia because they require more frequent care than the general elderly population. Symptoms to look for include fear, stress and anxiety, weight loss and malnutrition, and wearing old or unclean clothes which can show that they have limited funds for basics. Other indicators include patients talking about having a lack of money or suggesting that they're under pressure from family members. It's important to be mindful that in 60% of cases, the person committing the elder abuse is a close family member and that they may be in the room with the patient. The best way to prevent elder abuse is to make sure your patient has planned ahead for their finances and estate. This includes having a reliable enduring power of attorney proper and professional estate planning, and a clear and updated will. General practitioners and healthcare professionals can take steps to empower their patients to do this. If you suspect abuse is already happening, the first important step is letting the victim know about services that are available to support them. In more severe cases of dementia, where the patient no longer has capacity, it could be in the best interests for an administrator to be appointed by VCAT. State Trustees provides personal and tailored support to help people who are in this situation. We run free information sessions for health professionals and community workers about steps they can take to prevent and identify financial elder abuse. For more information, visit statetrustees.com.au or call 1300 138 672.